Salut everyone. So today I'm gonna bring you another review of a distro that I'm pretty sure you never heard about. It's called Buzzite Linux. And honestly, I do believe that you need to learn about this distro, and especially in certain case scenario. So let's get into it. As always, we're gonna start with a little bit of context. And in case you don't know me, I'm Airmax, and I'm the guy who test all the Linux distro for gaming for you. So one month ago, I went and I streamed the installation of Buzzite. And I have to say, this distro is really, really good, but for specific case scenario. And I'm going to explain that in further in the video. But the main idea is like you need to understand what really Buzzite is. And the way they describe themselves on their website, is they call themselves the next generation of Linux gaming powered by Fedora and Universal Blue. Oh, I, I like, I didn't notice that, but there is a little like effect on the website, not bad. Bazite is a custom image built upon Fedora Atomic Desktop that brings the best of Linux gaming to all your devices, including your favorite handheld. So you, you know where we are going there. But if you understand it clearly, this distro is an immutable distro based on Fedora Atomic Desktop, which is pretty dope, I have to say. And what they really propose is an out-of-the-box experience ready for gaming. So what they say there is like you install it, you have Steam and Lutris pre-installed, HDR ready for the AMG GPU, and don't be worried, it's also working for the NVIDIA GPU, uh, a specific um, scheduler for having like, you know, a better process, uh, priority scheduling. Uh, this one is from seven system 76 scheduler, not my favorite, but it's still there and numerous community developed tools for your gaming needs. So out of the box, you have a distro, which is ready to game, which is pretty awesome. So they come with little examples there. Uh, then they explain the, the, the system update and the way like the immutable works. So if you want to learn about that, I made a full video on Kinoit, Fedora Kinoit, which is the atomic version of Fedora with KDE. I made this video like almost one year ago, and you can go and check it out. But they come with a lot, lot of modification. And we're going to go through them, not all of them, but I, I want to uh, kind of like explain what it is first for you to have a, a good idea there. On top of that, they explain you that you have multiple opportunity to install application on this distro via FlatHub, also via DistroBox, because this distro come with DistroBox install and also with a little neat, nice GUI uh, to make it work, which is pretty pretty dope, I have to say. And uh, it, 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 it gives you like the opportunity to install everything you want, which, which is pretty dope. And when it comes to desktop environment, they have KDE and GNOME out of the box, which is pretty nice. And on top of that, they have a special version of a desktop environment, like based on SteamOS. Uh, so here they use a Deki louder here, but really you could use this distro on your handled console or on your home theater PC with a Steam uh, gaming mod. Uh, you know, like interface, which is just awesome. And the last point they mentioned on their website is the fact that they have a full support for every type of game controller you have, any type of GPU, and any type of like Wi-Fi wi card, Wi-Fi card. Like you, you, you're gonna have access to everything, like RGB control. And and I, I have to say, we're gonna go through the full list, but I have to say, like the promise here is delivered. Okay, like spoiler alert, this is delivered. So now you understand the overall like concept and vision of the distro, which is an optimized for gaming type of distro based on a, a Fedora uh, base immutable or what is it called now like atomic, which, which is a really good idea. So let, let me get into it and we're going to start with a positive. The positive is like I went through the installation and it was super easy. Everything was pretty like straight out uh, of the box. When you install, you arrive also on a, on a little menu, which gives you an opportunity to install all the different applications you might need. And I thought the menu was uh, well built and it gives you a lot of options. So I think it was really good. If you have an NVIDIA card, which was my case, 
you don't have to worry about the driver because they will provide an ISO specific for your NVIDIA card. You're going to have the latest driver. And here also, like you're going to have a really great experience out of the box. So Buzzite, uh, when it comes to like uh, GPU hardware, no problem. Another really good point related to the distro is the fact it's, it's based on immutable uh, system, atomic system. So you're going to have a super, I would say super, super stable experience. And in case you break it, you just have to roll back to your latest pin snapshot and everything is going to be working 100% of the time. And this is, is actually really, really good. Now, if you go a little bit deeper about what they add in terms of like customization, you have an exhaustive list on their GitHub page. And dude, you are not going to be disappointed. So I'm, I'm not going to be covering all of them, but long story short, this distro is ready for gaming and content creation, like out of the box. Whatever hardware you have, it's going to work. I can guarantee it. Like this thing is just, I would call it a tractor. Like it's just like run on everything. So I don't think I'm going to be able to go through all the details there, but if I had to compare it to another distro, I will compare it to Nobara. This is literally the immutable distro version of Nobara. So let me show you, like just, just because I think it's interesting. Uh, you will have like the FSync kernel, HDR uh, available uh, in game mode. You're going to have NVK. You're going to have everything related to AMD, ROC, CM, OpenCL, HIP runtime. No problem with the, the codec, which is great. All the support for the Xbox controller done. Uh, multiple theme support for display link. This one is super interesting. Latency flex, VK basalt, Mango Hud, and OBS VK capture installed and available by default. So I don't know if you kind of remember you like what Nobara is all about, but this is literally what it is, and it's an immutable version of it. So you have support for wine sync, fast sync. You have. Uh, you have so many stuff. So DistroBox pre-installed with automatic update for created container, which is, uh, well, we're going to cover that real quick, but this is really awesome. Uh, the scheduler, as I mentioned before, mm, let me check there. Uh, green with MV for an LACT to overclock your uh, uh, GPU if you want. Support for WayDroid, OpenRGB, OpenRazor. It's just crazy. Also, like the Wooting keyboard. I was like, wow, this one is actually fun. But like you have a lot, lot of patch applied to it. And this is just awesome. And this is just for the desktop. If you go further and you want to look at the Steam Deck and Home Theater PC, the HTPC, you will see they come with a lot of over patches. So I won't be like, you know, covering all of them. But I'm telling you, this distro is ready to be installed in your HTPC. Like to me, it will be the perfect one. And I'm going to explain that later, but think about it. Okay. Well, before we move on to the negative, I want to cover like quickly two other like really important, I would say application in my opinion. They come with a specific command related to the installation of software on your PC. And you go through uh, what they called an application called you just so if you want to upgrade you just you type you just in your terminal upgrade boom it's going to be up to date you want to switch you want to you have ton 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 of commands there just simplified with you just so instead of you know sometimes like having to learn how to manage uh, an immutable distro, you just go through those commands and you're going to be able to get more more flexibility and I would say like easiness of access by using this command. And I think this is great. Again, I won't be covering all the commands, but I really uh, invite you to try it. it this, is, this is just awesome. Another positive point is related to Secure Boot. This distro does support Secure Boot, which is a big plus for some of you guys. You are using, for example, like Windows 11 on your over hard drive, secure boot enable, you don't have to do anything. And this is great. The last one, because we are really talking about gaming here, and I want to talk about content creation. I went through OBS and OBS has all the options. Everything is working out of the box. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this was a really great experience. 
if you want to go further and install something like a little bit more heavy, like DaVinci Resolve, you can do this by installing it on a container. You will be using, for example, DistroBox, install Arch in this container via DistroBox, and then like install DaVinci Resolve from the AUR, for example, if you want to do it simple. And they have like a nice little like GUI interface to go through that. I tried to do it on live on stream, but I didn't succeed, but I'm pretty sure you can do it. I didn't really push it forward, but this is the main idea, right? The way is a kind of like pushed away the restriction of the immutable base by using DistroBox. It's just, in my opinion, like super smart. And uh, because it's installed out of the box, you don't have a lot of effort to do. So yeah, that's, that's another good point. So now let's talk about the negative because I present you all the positives there, but I also have to show you the negative. And when it comes to negative, the first thing that comes to mind is the lack of tweak opportunity. The way this overall like immutable distro works, they kind of put you in a, in a place where you have to accept what the maintainer made for you. You won't be able to go, you know, like behind the scene or under the hood and start to modify whatever you want. So I discussed with the team, they were super active, like the team of Bazite, because what I was trying to do was to install a TKG kernel on this distro. And the funny part is that like I was able to compile it, I was able to install it on the distro, even if it's an immutable distro. But then I reached the limit of the distro itself and the fact it was immutable. The kernel itself, you can install it, but then you're going to have a problem with the module, and especially the NVIDIA module. You can't do it on your own. It has to be done at the maintainer level. So if you are really into that, you could create a fork, install the driver, and recreate your own like, ISO installation. It wouldn't be a problem. You could do that on your own. But I think that if you don't want to do that, well, you're going to be restricted. And if you are a fan of different like kernel optimized for gaming or you know extra low latency well you might not be able to install them easily on this distro when it comes to a driver you're gonna have the same i guess like problem the driver they provide are the latest i'm just wondering how long it takes for them to upgrade them uh, within their own like image system immutable image system I don't know how long it's going to take. I do believe they are pretty reactive. But if you want to have the driver as the first second they are getting released, I don't know if it's going to work out. So I know it's a minimal problem, but I know some of you guys are like, oh, I want the latest NVIDIA driver when they come out and whatever for the feature. You might not be able to get it out of the box. You're going to have to wait for the maintainer to do the job. Another like negative point is related to DistroBox. So DistroBox is great because it kind of like blur the limit between the container like base of the distro and whatever you want to install on it. There is not a lot of like performance lost when you uh, containerize with distro box on uh, this distro, but still, it still had a, a, le a little level of complexity there. And if you guys are not ready for that, it might be a problem. In my opinion, it's more a plus than a negative, but I do understand that some of you guys, they don't want to have to deal with container within the distro. Now, something that's really top of my nerves, and I, I need to share it with you guys, is the fact that when you do an update, it's going to be really slow. Okay, This is the nature of an immutable. And if you are used, for example, to Arch, where you just press enter and it's like, shroom, everything is download, install, and you move on. Here, it's going to take longer. So I know some of you guys, they don't care, but I need to tell it to you, it's slow. It's really, really slow. So if you don't care about it, no problem. And there is a case where you shouldn't care about it. But if you care about it, take it in consideration. And the last one is based on the fact of accessibility. If you want to go deeper within this distribution because it's immutable, you're going to have to relearn some basics. If you switch from Debian to Arch, you're going to have to relearn also like some basics. But here, you're going to have to relearn a little bit more because the process of fault when you switch from a normal distro to immutable distro or atomic distro, 
you're gonna have to relearn some some way of doing things. So it's not that hard, but also take it in consideration. If you are used to any other type of distro which is not immutable and you need to switch towards this one, well, you're gonna have a learning phase. A little bit like uh, when you switch to NixOS, for example. This is exactly the, the type of like uh, thinking you're gonna have to go through. On the good, good side, is like I talk to their dev team, they are super responsive. There is a lot of documentation everywhere. So I would say it's still easier than uh, NixOS, for example. And as uh, the last but not the least, the performance in game. So I did some tests, and here this is the type of issue I encountered. Somehow the performance on this distro was I would say between like three and five percent under what you would get on a cache OS or any type of like distro optimized. Uh, by your own, you know, like a uh, little finger. <laughs> like if you take a Debian and you optimize it, well, you're going to have better performance than this one. Okay. Not by a lot. It's going to be 3%, 5%. It's not, it's not that crazy. But again, I have to share that with you. I have to share like my results with you. You're going to be a little bit under. But the promise overall is not really about crazy performance. It's more about an accessible, gaming ready, and breakable distro out of the box, right? And I think this is a big, big value of this distro. And you get it, right? It's it's not about like the, the type of like arch distro you're gonna take, put put your hand under the hood and gr gr grind those like five or like uh, 10 FPS on top of the rest. This distro is more a distro you will install and kind of like set up once and forget about any issue related to update, technical problem, or anything like that. It's going to be working right off the box. And I think this is why, in my opinion, this distro is great for any type of like HTPC, so home theater, PC, or any type of PC you want to transform into a console. Like, like this is... This is for me the, the, the best of the best, like la creme de la creme. I'm not even kidding. I would, if I had one, I would install it right off the bat because you're going to have no tweak at all to do to have a gaming experience out of the box. There is nothing to do. Now, is it going to be the best experience in terms of like FPS? Maybe not, but it's not, it's not bad by a lot. It's not like you're going to lose like 25%. You're going to lose like 3% which is kind of okay. And the other hand is like, if there is an update that break it, you just roll back to the previous snapshot or the snapshot you pinned, and you're going to be good to go again. And this, in my opinion, is what makes this distro really, really good. And I've, I've, I've seen all the other immutable out there. And I do believe this is the best atomic distro for this specific usage. Now, if you are just a gamer on your PC and you don't want to do anything else, well, you could transform your PC in a console game with this distro too, right? Like you can do a lot of things. I'm, I'm just thinking that overall, compared to let's say Arch or I don't know, any other type of, of distro, you're going to be a little bit restricted by the atomic way of doing things in general. But Again, like this is going to be your decision to make. I just wanted to present you this distro because I do believe it, it's a great distro, guys, for specific usage, usage case. Okay, we did it, boys. So, guys, I'm out. Uh, I'm going to see you uh, Wednesday and Friday on my stream on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to uh, miss the next uh, distro I'm going to try there. But I have to say uh, this Buzzite Linux Distro was a great surprise. And if you want to give it a try, I would really advise you to do it. I'm going to also uh, let a link in the description below of my stream. Like that's going to have like a full experience of it. Like I, I think I made like two streams about this, this distro. Oh, it was really good. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.